coming up on the ZTV Sports Report. We'll get to hear from Akron's starting quarterback, sophomore Thomas Woodson. And from the starting midfielder for the Zips men's soccer team, Richie Larea. We will also check out some women's soccer highlights, along with a few other looks around the world of Akron athletics. Everyone get excited because the ZTV Sports Report starts now. Welcome to the ZTV Sports Report, your home for everything Akron Zips Athletics. I'm Kara Riccardi. And I'm Parker Smith. So Parker, did you enjoy your Halloween weekend? Uh, yeah, you know, I can't complain too much. Obviously, I would have liked to get a couple more Butterfingers, but there's always next year. So does that mean you went trick-or-treating? No, I bounced around to all the offices on campus. I mean, you know, offices usually have those free candy bowls this time of year. you got to take advantage of it. You know, I, I can't say that I'm surprised. Speaking of surprise, I bet you Thomas Woodson was pretty surprised to be the starting quarterback for the Zips this year. We'll hear what he had to say about his climb up the depth chart. Absolutely, and while I want to explore your candy crusade a little more, we can wait till after the show. Let's hear what Thomas had to say. Along with seeing how the team fared this weekend in a showdown with Central Michigan. Again, Thomas has always had the ability to be a, 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 a very good quarterback. He got himself up to 158 pounds. He can't play, he can't play football and lead the team as a quarterback at that heavy. And so he, 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 we, we challenged him. Uh, going to fall camp, uh, that's when I really I lost all of my weight going to fall camp. I was about 231, and uh, I was about 259 pounds. Yeah, I lost around close to 30 pounds at that time, so uh, right now I'm like 228. And uh, going, I was I was not getting that many reps in uh, fall camp too, honestly. Uh, just trying to make the best of the reps that I got. Uh, I was uh, splitting reps for the, thir uh, for the third team, actually, splitting reps, so I didn't really get that many reps. Some, some days I really didn't get any reps. Uh, just trying to, whenever I get in there, just trying to do my best, actually. And, uh, and going to, to this year, I mean, honestly, I never knew if I, I want to play this year or not. And uh, I mean, I always had confidence in myself, but I never really knew. And uh, I mean, I just had to be patient. I just never knew what was going to happen, so I just had to be somewhat ready. Heading into the 2015 season as a third string quarterback, it would have been easy for Woodson to feel down about himself. But Woodson thought back to his childhood growing up in urban Pittsburgh to keep everything in perspective. That this is not, I mean, it's not hard at all, honestly. Uh, all the stuff that was going here, I've been through way, way worse in my whole life. Uh, yeah, like way worse stuff uh, going on. Like, and I just think about football. I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to enjoy it, and uh, and uh, I just know this ain't the hardest thing that I've been through. So I just look at it as, as that, and I've been through way more, and to not let this really stress me out. Uh, well, going to Savannah State. Uh, I never really, really know what was going to happen, honestly. I never knew when I was going to get in. I just had to be somewhat ready, I guess. for the game is not going to be hard because there's other teams that get the same goals as we do and uh and we just gotta we just gotta win we gotta play our best and uh we just gotta win these football games and uh, make it count we, win. we got a tough opponent coming in the, this saturday central michigan they're a good solid football team always one of the best teams in the mac every year and uh they play hard football on the halloween edition of zips football akron would take on the central michigan chippewas zips driving in the first Thomas Woodson would find Amani Davis for a first down out to the 40. So nice, how about twice? 
Amani Davis would move the Zips into Central Michigan territory. Woodson does another good job here of getting the ball out fast to one of his playmakers and oh, the defender misses and into the red zone the Zips go. Just when you think Akron had everything going in their favor, a sack and a fumble would serve as a huge momentum killer. Luckily, the ball did go out of bounds and the Zips would settle for a field goal try. Good snap, good hold, but overall the kick is no good. The game remains scoreless. The Chippewas on the attack. Play action pass and he drops it in the basket. Like a family passing out candy to trick-or-treaters. Same drive, different quarter. Cooper Rush shows love to his fullback off the play action. 7-0 Chippewas. Next Zips possession, Thomas Woodson would find Jerome Lane and he's moving faster than the kids rushing to get to the king size candy bar house. The Zips would go on to miss the extra point. In the third, Cooper Rush would add insurance with his second touchdown and the Zips would fall 14-6. Tough one there for Coach Bowden and the Zips to swallow. Going to have to make a push in the final four games if they want to make a run in the MAC East. They do have a favorable schedule coming in. I could see the Zips hitting the sixth win mark and making a bowl game this year. Which would be their second bowl appearance of all time and their first since 2005 when they fell to Memphis 38-31 in the Motor City Bowl. Well, I do know one place where Terry Bowden can learn a thing or two about making the playoffs in the MAC. Where would that be? Uh, Keith Dambrat's office. Ah, very true, Kara. The Zips men's basketball team has made making the postseason a habitual result year after year under Coach D. Let's take a look at this year's media day as the men's basketball team aims at another MAC title run. Thank you to Coach Kest, Hannah Plyvin, D. Gibson, Anita Brown, and Megan Barilla. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out, alumni, boosters, students, athletes. Um, our theme this year, uh, and every year it's different based on the personnel that we have coming back. And it took me a couple months to figure out what our theme would be. And this year's theme is fun. But the, uh, the F stands for family because we understand the importance of us being a family. And our team chemistry right now is the best that it's ever been. Uh, it's great in the locker room. We feel like we have great leadership this year. And uh, they've been a pleasure to coach so far. So it's, um, it's really hard uh, training for the fast break that we run. Uh, we do a lot of running in practice, but during the games it pays off, and it's actually a lot of fun uh, just being such an up-tempo team because a lot of teams can't keep up, and um, I think we all love it. We're all really comfortable with it, and it works out great for us. The better the team you have, the better personnel you have, the less you have to do. And so I'm always going to have those sets in my back pocket if I need them, but um, you know, basically, we're a throw it inside team, a team that can kind of play a variety of different ways. So I tend to really be hard on guys that I think are really good. And I kind of massage some guys that struggle at times. And then sometimes I'm in between. But I think that's really what coaching is about. You know, you have to treat everybody fairly, but everybody differently. So different guys react to different things. You know, we know, we understand this is our last run at it. Um, you know, the last few years not making it to the MAC championships has been really hard on us. You know, me and Reggie, we've been spending more time in the gym this year than we ever have. So it's definitely motivational to us to, to get back and, and to get another ring this year. Yeah, we talk about a lot of time after getting, getting it, uh, to the MAC tournament and winning it our freshman year and then kind of falling, falling short these past couple years. Um, it's just been motivation. and. And that's, that's what we try to translate to these other guys. Like, they'll realize it one day, and, and they'll be in our shoes one day, and, and we try to get them to do it for us and help us accomplish our goals. Gotta love hearing from Coach Dambrot and Coach Kest, and I really can't wait to see what the season has in store for the teams this year. The expectations will be high, as they are used to, but I agree it will be a great season of Zips basketball. And plus, the new Zippy decals on the court are awesome. The Akron fans will appreciate the addition, I'm sure. And I'm sure they would appreciate the second half of this show, so don't go anywhere as we take a quick break. We'll be right back.
welcome back to the ZTV Sports Report. The Akron men's soccer team has once again put themselves into the limelight as they have reached the top 10 in the national rankings. Hopefully we can regain some of the tournament magic that we have had in years past and make a run at it all. That would be a great ride for all of the Zips Nation. Now let's take an inside look at Zips midfielder Richie Larea along with a recap of the men's most recent matches against Michigan State and UCLA. The Zips men's soccer team is once again having a fantastic campaign in 2015, led by sophomore midfielder Richie Larea, who's having a breakout season. While Larea surprised everybody with his development coming so soon, he felt that his time was now. Uh, I was hoping it happened because I had a freshman year to get used to how things go with college soccer and around here, so I think now feel like I'm ready to play to help the team and my like teammates and everyone else around me is ready as well so it's good. His recent success has caught the attention of the national media who voted Larea as the national player of the week twice this season. Larea explains how he's handled the extra attention on the field and off the field. Uh, it's nice to get the recognition but I try not to focus on it too much. I don't really pay attention to it more about like the team goals this year so we really want to get a national championship but yeah, I feel like teams do, uh, they, they notice those things obviously, so I do get marked a little harder now, kicked here and there and all that, but I guess it's all part of it. With his breakout performance this season, many people forget that Larea had a much smaller role last season where he only scored one goal. Larea talks about the biggest difference from last year to this year. It's, it's a big difference. Uh, last year I was playing a bit deeper and as I was telling you before, I was getting used to things around here. wasn't as consistent as I should have been last year and now I guess you see it, you see it more because I'm playing a bit higher up the field and taking my chances as well. Third year head coach Jared Embick has given Larea the opportunity to feature in a star-studded midfield for the Zips. Larea explains how Coach Embick places him in the right spots, allowing him to use his strengths as a player. Yeah, I feel like he's a big part of the success for me and the whole team and a couple of like individuals right now because it's placed me in a position where I could get forward, use my abilities to get goals, assists, create chances for other people to create chances as well. So. There's been a long chain of players who've come through Akron soccer program and have gone on to major professional and international careers. Many have tabbed Larea as the next big thing to come out of Akron, but Larea claims he doesn't quite feel the pressure to follow in their footsteps. Uh, don't don't really look at that. I like try to take it day by day, but it'd be a pleasure to be able to come out of here and then go professionally, obviously, but just focus on the little things game by game and then the team team goals first because if we get to national championship I feel like everyone's individual's goals will come out as well. The number five rated at University of Akron men's soccer team played against Michigan State on Wednesday and I'll tell you this was a game to watch. We started off from a nice throw from Michigan State and a nice header, but Akron Zips goalkeeper managed to catch it, followed by a nice give and go from the Zips. But Michigan's defense makes it difficult for the Zips to score on this offensive drive. We get a nice lead pass from the Zips to Richie Loreo, who gets tripped on the attack. Oh, and he is frustrated that he did not get a call about that one. But keep up the persistence, Richie, and the goals will come. The following play, Adam Nashman gives a nice lead pass to Richie Larray, who manages to get by the defender and has a one-on-one -on -one with the goalie, but gets tripped up and gets the call this time. The Zips turn to Victor Soto. Score on the bottom right corner of the net, making that one nothing Zips. Adam Nashman tries to cross it into the goalie, but Michigan defense blocks it. He trips the ball again, tries to shoot it from that far away, and just barely misses the net. Oh, Michigan defender trips Richie Larray for a second time this game, making it a second penalty kick. The zip zone, Victor Soto attempts his second penalty kick of the day, as it's good on the right side of the... The zips go up 2-0. The intensity of this game is just getting started. 
as the Zips try and go for a give and go to the outside as he has a one on one but the Michigan defense takes the ball away from Richie LeRae once again as a Michigan defender trips an Akron attacker as he also shooting the goal besides Victor Soto as he takes his time approaching the ball as he shoots it to the left side the goalie gets right but he was just barely off on that one Sam Gainford's goal makes the score 4-0 Zips don't count Michigan out just yet as later in the second half in the 89th minute Dejuan Jones has a nice shot on goal the Zips were able to beat Michigan 4-1 with the help of their very talented penalty kicker, Victor Soto. The Akron Zips took on the UCLA Bruins on Sunday, and right away, Bruins score here from Sei Adekoya after Akron turnover, which is a pretty common theme. But then here, Stuart Holt Houston with a nice ball in for Adam Nachum, runs up and easily puts it away. A nice little celebration from Adam there. But UCLA would strike right back. Jose Hernandez would get the ball after another Akron turnover and assist from Abdu Dinladi. You know, Akron would strike first in the second half with Sir Holt Houston, the Kiwi, New Zealand international, really like saying that. Gives it off to Goncalo Soros, who lifts the ball over the goal to make it 2-2. And, you know, Caleb Porter said, Caleb Porter, Caleb Porter's playing for the Timbers right now, I'm sorry. Jared Embick. Jared Embeck said after the game that he thinks they celebrated a little bit too much after this goal. <laughs> and here, heartbreak as Adam Nasham's shot rims off the post. Then, you know, UCLA, UCLA striking back right away. Oh, and they put it away again. This time, Sei Adekoya again from Abdu Dunladi. UCLA would then get a penalty kick late. 81st minute, Jose Hernandez. Cheeky, cheeky attempt puts it in and you know celebration is going to get him in trouble with Victor Soto who's you know kind of the enforcer of Akron but Akron would fall number six ranked Akron Zips falls to number 25 UCLA four to two two to four soccer terms even though the team couldn't get a W they still will share the MAC title after their two to zero win against West Virginia guess what time it is Kara game time well, of course, it's always game time on the ZTV Sports Report, but that's not what I was talking about. Good one, Parker. What I was going to say is that it's time for a break. We'll be right back, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back, everyone, to the ZTV Sports Report. This has been a rebuilding year for the women's soccer team as they are under a whole new coaching staff. My co-host, Kara Riccardi, had the chance to talk with Coach Noreen, who has recently started at Akron after coaching at Slippery Rock for 20 years. She also was able to catch up with two players to hear how the transition's been. We will then see highlights from their latest game against Buffalo. Let's check it out. You know, we've uh, lots of work to do uh, to get the program where we believe it can be, and, uh, but it's been a very exciting year. There's a lot of uh, twists and turns, and, uh, but it's been a wonderful experience so far. The women's soccer team is under a brand new coaching staff, led by head coach Noreen Herlihy. Herlihy is bringing in a new style of coaching that she believes will better the team. It depends on each coach is different, you know. I know everybody says, you know, defense wins championships, uh, but I'm always a believer of that. you got to score goals to win games. So we've been trying to really instill that, get forward a little bit more. So we're planting the seeds to be truthful about it this season. We've been, little, you know, maybe taking some risks this season, but we've done that by choice. Uh, because really it's about the future and what we want to instill so that next year we can keep moving on and progress, you know, from season to season. Senior Claire Addy is confident in Herlihy's new coaching philosophies. She is very attacking minded, which in the past we have been more defensive as a whole and we've struggled attacking. But with her enthusiasm and her positivity and her will to get forward for all of us, I think that will become a much more dangerous team in the attacking third. Junior Lucas Hegeman, who played under Hurley at Slippery Rock University, transferred to the University of Akron when Hurley he did. She says it is how relatable Hurley he is that makes her such a great coach. As for myself, she makes that connection where we both love soccer. Like soccer is a very big part of my life and it's part of her life, but she understands each person individually differently than say other coaches who just generalize that soccer players are one kind, where she gets that each person is an individual. 
the transition really is just you've got to trust your experience, what you're all about, you know, as a player, as a coach, and just look to bring it here. So whether I was coaching in a Division Three or Division Two or Division One program, it's about running the college program as you see fit and doing it in the right way, and hopefully winning as many games as you can along the way. On October 29th, the Lady Zips hosted University of Buffalo for the last game of the season and the chance of making it into the Mid-American Conference Tournament on the line. Buffalo opened strong in this one by putting tons of shots on goal, unfortunately missing some very slightly, and Akron's defense stepping up when it counted. But Akron's defense wouldn't hold forever, as you see here sneaking one to the back corner of the net for the first goal of the match. And Buffalo did not make Annabelle Hegeman's day any easier having her dive back and forth in the goal trying to stop Buffalo from scoring, which led to a 1-0 lead for Buffalo at half. But Buffalo would find success yet again here with a long pass over the middle and a header to put it in the back of the net. And then finally, with all the hard work and determination they put in this match, the Lady Zips finally find success in the 74th minute from a shot that seemed to travel all the way across Akron. And after the game, Coach had a word about that goal. We joke about her all the time because she's, you know, from Sweden and we always call her Zlatan. And, uh, you know, we always felt like that there might be a Zlatan goal in her. And it was a scorcher. And it seemed as though maybe the Lady Zips could pull this win out. But, unfortunately, late in the game, Akron committed a penalty in the goalie box, which led to a penalty kick. And, unfortunately, Buffalo did convert it. And Buffalo won this game 3-1. We just got some new information about the Lady Zips. Previously, we thought they had to win this game to make the MAC tournament, but the Lady Zips found out that they did, in fact, make the Mid-American Conference Tournament. So, you're going to see them competing for the MAC title. Parker, when I was talking with Coach, she was expecting this to be a year to revamp and develop, so I'm really expecting them to come back next year fresh and ready to start a new season. Yeah, I agree. I think they've made huge strides of improvement this season. From the field to the court, we are going to take a look at the volleyball team who also took on Buffalo. Terry Rabbits has a highlight. Time to check out some volleyball action as the Buffalo Bulls take on your Akron Zips. Coach Tom Hanna giving his team some last minute instructions. Things look good early for Akron. Teamwork here, finished by a power shot by Anna Wenger. Forced Buffalo into this error and the Zips were the winners of the first point of the match. As with all sports, the ball sometimes can have a mind of its own. Check out what this ball does. Akron pays attention, and Buffalo doesn't. The Zips win the point. Once the set was tied at four, Buffalo began to take over the match with their power game and good frontline defense. The Bulls scored four in a row to take a 10-6 advantage, then maintained that lead to down Akron in the first set, 25-19. The Bulls start the second set with a 6-0 run, more defense, and more power, and take the set 25-14. In the set, Akron committed 12 errors. Down two sets to none, the Zips have their backs against the wall, but come out fighting and decide to play some strong defense themselves. They use a 7-1 run, some teamwork, and great frontline play here and also score the last four points of the set to take it 25 to 50. And we go on to a fourth set. With the fourth set tied at five, Buffalo went back to its power game and ended the night for the Zips, dropping them to eight and 16 overall, two and nine in the MAC. That concludes our show for today. But before you go, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at ZTV Sports. Thanks for joining us this week on the ZTV Sports Report, your home for everything Akron Zips Athletics. We'll see you next time.
This program was produced by ZTV at the University of Akron. To find out how you can make Emmy-winning media, visit the UA School of Communication online. ZTV. Make media. Make a difference.